So, for some context, I've been having this recurring dream for the past few months or so, however it got so much worse. I don't often dream, so I was really surprised when I did the first time this happened. The dream is I'm in some sort of hotel it seems, and there's an open elevator in front of me. I go inside the elevator, but there's no buttons and the light isn't on, however the door always closes immediately and I can feel that the elevator is moving, but I can never tell if it's going up or down. I'm just stuck standing there in complete darkness. However, a few days ago I decided to wander around the hotel instead. It just seemed like a normal hotel, the only strange thing about it was that it was completely empty, but I didn't think anything of it. I wandered around for a little while before finding a room with the door wide open, all the other doors were closed, I don't remember the room number, but curiosity got the best of me and I took a peek inside. It was like something out of a horror movie in there. There were scratches slash claw marks all over the wall, everything had been thrown to the ground and broken, the bed was a complete mess, and just above the bed was writing on the wall. I don't know if it was paint or blood, but it was red, it read. You broke the cycle. Or something along the lines of that. I woke up shortly after I saw the writing. Then, I went back to not dreaming the next few days, and I thought everything was fine, I'm not going to have that dream again. I was so wrong. Last night I went to bed, again, not expecting to dream. So, naturally, I was surprised when I found myself in the hotel again. Remembering what happened last time, I decided to just go into the elevator. The dream seemed perfectly normal, no buttons, no light, etc. But then, the lights suddenly flickered on, it seemed the lights were bleeding or something. The elevator felt like it was moving faster, but I still couldn't tell which direction I was going. A few shadowy figure that seemed vaguely familiar appeared in front of me, their voices were extremely distorted, but I could just barely hear them saying. You broke the cycle. They just kept repeating that, after a few moments, I woke up in a cold sweat, and I haven't been able to go to sleep or even just close my eyes without seeing that image of the shadowy figures, the blood on the walls, I don't know how long it will be before I feel safe enough time fall back asleep, but right now, I'm still incredibly shaken up. I know this isn't as bizarre slash creepy as some of the other posts I've seen here, but I need to tell someone otherwise I think I'll go insane. I don't know where to start this story. I guess I'll introduce myself. My name is James, I am a 27-year-old male, and I live in a particular quiet area. Well, used to. I lived in rural Upper Michigan for years, and loved it out here. Had no neighbors basically, just all property. I've always had this scary feeling being out here, but it doesn't compare to how I felt a few weeks ago. I was driving home one night from my job, when all of a sudden, my radio randomly turns on. I only use Bluetooth, so I haven't used my radio in years. So it kind of scared me. But station 99.4 comes on, and this will be relevant later in this story. Mind you, I have never heard, nor seen this station before when I used the radio, even the other day when I used my mom's car. The radio read, Attention all Grant residents, please find shelter immediately. There have been multiple reports of tall, dark blue creatures spotted walking around town. For now, all of you are sectioned off in the city, and no one comes in and out. Please stay tuned as we find out more information. Now this had me shaking. I made sure that the pistol in my glove box was loaded, and I kept it on the passenger seat. I then got a text from the number 994, and it read, IT is safe TOB outside now. The whole creature thing turned out to be a hoax. I stared for a good few minutes at my phone as I was pulled over on the side of the road, wondering what I should do. I went with my gut, and was not trusting the text, and drove straight home. On the way home, I saw one of those. Things. It was about 8.5 feet tall, dark blue skin, and almost a humanoid face, but it was just off. I don't think it saw me, but I didn't take any chances. I'm surprised my little sunfire could go from 0 to 60 so fast. 
I eventually reached home, darting it inside. I then got a text from my friend who lives a few miles down the road, saying how a creature ran into his home and just killed his entire family. He said it ran like nothing he'd ever seen, and had this screech that he couldn't unhear. He unloaded a full clip from his assault rifle in it, and all it did was make the damn thing run. He said it ran screeching, and leaking a purple ooze. I told him that I was home now, and loading up to leave. I then got another update from the radio station, but this time it came from my phone. Hello, all Grant residents. I hope you guys are still alive. The government is already trying to cover this entire thing up and kill everyone in the town, for they have fenced off the entire town. We now have reports of similar, smaller creatures in the town. Unlike the blue ones, these ones are completely not human-like. We are not sure what is going on, but just stay indoors and hide. Now I'm thinking hard about this. What the hell would have caused all of this? I sat for 10 minutes just thinking, but then I remembered. The lake. A couple years ago, people kept going after visiting a lake in our town. There was a hospital down the street from the lake, and a couple weeks ago the hospital randomly shut down, and it was left abandoned. What if the hospital were conducting some kind of experiment? I get back to loading my guns when I hear a loud bang from downstairs. I ran down there, just to see a green, animal-looking thing. It had no eyes, but it was staring directly into my soul. If that makes sense. I didn't hesitate. I unloaded a full clip from my AK-47 into this thing. It shredded it apart, leaving the purple goo that my friend was talking about. I then burn it in my furnace in my house, just to get rid of it. The smell was god-awful. I then got a text from my friend. His name is Dan, so that's what I'll be calling him from now on. Dan sent me this picture, and it was a bunch of military men walking down the street in gas masks, flamethrowers and guns in hand. He said that the military men won't even speak to him, they just kept on going. I noticed that my data started to slow down, and my Wi-Fi was completely out. I called 911 to ask what was going on, but no response. The 994 number texted again, but this time, it was way scarier. James. We know where you are. Just listen and you will live. Go into the beam go into the beam go into the beam. I was thinking, what the hell, to myself. I go outside and see a giant pyramid type flying piece of metal shining this purple beam. I also saw military men firing at it, failing to get rid of it. I hop in my car, and drive as fast as I can away from the beam. I then see a channel 99.4 van on the side of the road, but something's off. It's now getting dark, and the lights are all on in the van. I pull closer, only to see blood splattered everywhere. On the tires, windshield, doors, handles, hell even the inside was covered. I sped off, hoping to reach city limits soon. I text Dan, asking if he's alright, and I'm waiting on a response. I then approach city limits, only to realize that there's a fence all around that is heavily guarded. I pull up to the gate, and ask the man standing next to it if I can leave, and this is exactly what he says. No one comes in or out. Until we get things under control at least. Feel free to check again in a month. A month? I thought to myself. Hell no. I tell him that I'm getting out one way or another. He did not like this comment very much, as he simply walked up to my car, and that's all that I can remember. I woke up cold and in pain, slowly realizing where I am. I am inside of the hospital. I hear screams from all over, and lights constantly flickering. I can't even stand, the pain is so bad. I look at my veins, and they have become this dark purple color. I run outside my room, only to see people turning into those blue monsters in the other rooms on this floor, and government officials are just behind bulletproof glass panes. I then see a door, and book it. I ended up in this empty hall, with an elevator at the end. I get on the elevator, fighting the pain, and go to the first floor. 
I see government officials all over the lobby, but at this point the adrenaline kicks in and I run. I call Dan, only to get no answer. I see a military jeep stopped, so I hop in. We rode out of the city, and I made it out. I did, however, notice that my skin now has this blue tint, and it's getting worse. Must be nothing. In my defense, I'm usually an extremely careful driver. Just ask anyone who's ridden with me. They'll tell you I follow all traffic laws to the letter and I only exceed the speed limit by a few miles. I'm explaining all this to convey that what happened wasn't due to any sort of reckless disregard on my part. What it really boiled down to was me being in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong person. In this case, a witch. That's right, a witch. She had the hat on and everything. I didn't think they genuinely existed, but apparently, that seems to be the case and I suffered her full wrath one night a couple months ago. I was getting back from an appointment, it took me like two hours to get there with traffic and the appointment itself took another three. When it was over, I wanted to get home as fast as possible. Here's where trouble began to rear its ugly head. First off it was raining and Google Maps wasn't working right and yes, I always make sure it's up to date. Anyway, it kept losing its signal. Maybe it was because I was going through a lot of tunnels. In any case, I didn't have a clue where to go. This may have been manageable in the daytime. Night though is another matter which brings me to the next thing which was that it was too dark for me to read the signs. I don't know what it is with the lack of streetlights on that highway, but that needs to change ASAP. I kept driving with only a vague idea of where I was headed. Every so often, I would glance at my phone to see if the app was working right. I even reset my phone to no avail. Before you say anything about using my phone while driving, there weren't any other cars on the road. At least, not up until then. Honestly, she came out of nowhere. Her car was black plus her tail lights weren't even working right so how was anyone supposed to have been prepared for that situation? I didn't even notice her until my headlights illuminated her bumper and by then I was already too close. I tried slamming on my brakes. However, upon realizing my car wouldn't stop in time, I swerved and hit the gas to pass her. In the process, my side mirror scraped her car. I was going to stop and offer to pay for her paint job. Then I checked the rear view and saw that she was taking another route. I felt bad but thought that was the end of the matter. I was wrong. It was only the start of what was going to be the worst hour and a half of my life. About ten minutes after the accident, I noticed a pair of headlights in my mirror. This didn't concern me until I realized they were going way too fast. Thinking they were just in a hurry, I changed lanes to let them pass. They switched with me and now I was getting concerned. Figuring they must be drunk or something, I sped up to lose them. In response, they did the same thing and slammed into my bumper. What the hell? I yelled. They hit me again and now I was getting pissed which I'll have you know is a very rare thing for me. Everyone has their limits, though and I've reached mine. They came up behind me again and this time, I got in another lane before they could hit me again. Then I jerked my wheel, slamming into their car. It was only then that I saw who this person was. A long wart-covered nose accompanied by scraggly gray hair, a pointy hat, sickly yellow eyes, and an extremely pissed-off expression turned to face me. You'll pay for that, she screamed, pointing a long dirty nail at me. I have ways of getting back at people who don't show their elders respect. My mouth dropped open and I squinted my eyes in confusion. I didn't think she was a real witch at first. However, she certainly looked like one. I quickly got over my shock and replied. Look, what happened back there was an honest mistake. If we stop this now, we can forget this all happened and I'm sorry. Despite me not feeling that the initial cause of all that was my fault, I wanted to end the incident without any more trouble. You should be, she said. And you should learn to watch where you're going. Well, I replied, trying to keep from getting irritated. 
next time, it would help if your tail lights worked. There you go again, blaming someone else. It's not my fault you're blind as a bat and you have some nerve, shirking responsibility onto a poor old woman like me. Then why the hell are you even driving? Based on how wide her eyes got, I immediately knew that was the wrong thing to say. If I said she didn't take it well, that wouldn't do it justice. She went ballistic. How dare you, she hissed at me. For that, you'll know my wrath. I braced myself for her to hit my car again. Instead, she did something far worse. She pulled something from her glove compartment, an old leathery book covered in runes. I'm always prepared in case I run into people like you. She started muttering something I couldn't understand. She seemed to be in some kind of trance. Seeing as how she was driving at the time, I wasn't about to stick around. I took the opportunity to leave her in the dust so to speak. When her headlights disappeared from my rear view, I once again, foolishly thought that was the end of the matter. I breathed a sigh of relief only to see her headlights yet again. I groaned. Clearly, this woman wasn't mentally well. That's when I remembered my cell phone. I was going to call the police. Then when I checked my mirror again, I dropped it in shock. What I was seeing couldn't be real could it? Turns out it was. Some noticeable changes had occurred to the woman's car. Most notably, it was now on fire. Blue wisps that were souls circled around it. The feeling I was experiencing then was akin to how someone must feel when they realize that they've accidentally woken up a famished lion. I was determined to lose her at all costs. Unfortunately, my car could only go so fast. She caught up with ease and pulled up in the adjacent lane. When she looked at me again, I saw that her face was now even more sunken in with her hair moving like wriggling worms. Her eyes were all black and she grinned with red stained pointed teeth. Thought you could get away did you? She asked. I'm sorry, was all I could manage to stutter out in response. It's too late for that. Now suffer my wrath. She pointed again and some of the souls flew at my car. I cursed as one popped up in front of me, showing the face of someone who died with shards of glass in their eyes. Another appeared to have died from being impaled based on the fact one of their eyes was missing, showing only an empty socket trickling blood. I understood then that they must have been people who died because of that woman and if I did too, I would become part of her soul collection. You'll make a fine addition, she cackled. Her mouth stretched open wide and a long flame shot from it. Screaming, I moved away quickly, forgetting about the concrete wall separating opposite lanes. I cursed and attempted to pull away. She hit my car again, sandwiching me in. Her car must have been strengthened by black magic because I couldn't make her car budge no matter how hard I tried. Nobody escapes me, she declared. Now you'll join the souls of all those other bastards. She was about to breathe fire once more. I braced myself for a burning death. Then the highway ended and I could move my car away. Unfortunately, I did this too fast and ended up going off the road. My car flipped downhill several times before coming to an upside-down stop in a muddy pond. Groaning, I grabbed my cell phone and crawled out my busted driver's window. I collapsed in pain. I tilted my head up to find the witch staring down at me. Serves you right, she yelled down at me. Now to end this. She raised her hands. Fire swirled around them and I closed my eyes, thinking I was going to be consumed by flame. Oh damn. I opened my eyes. She was holding a pocket watch. I'm late feeding my cat. She glared down at me. You were lucky this time, but if you ever mess with me again, I'll make sure you won't escape a second time. She got in her car and drove off. I managed to dial the police through my emergency call right before passing out. They sent someone out to investigate and I woke up later in the hospital. They asked me what happened and I told them that I was running off the road which technically wasn't wrong. Something peculiar happened and they inquired about the car's description. 
I couldn't remember the model, only that it was a car and colored black. Maybe it's some kind of curse she has on it or the accident messed up parts of my memory. They're investigating another pair of tire tracks at the scene. One officer mentioned an odd find to me and that was that the metal left behind from the wreckage seemed to have come from various cars. Each one was a different color. I'm not sure what that means. However, I know it can't be anything good and for their sake, I hope those officers never find that woman. If you ever find her and make her mad, the best advice I can give is, put the pedal to the metal. It was warm November night in 2019, I had just gotten into bed and had started to drift to sleep. My dream had started at a supermarket with a couple of friends. We were going through self-checkout when I noticed a man in a trench coat with a bucket hat behind us with no groceries. I had thought that this was a bit odd for someone to be in a trench coat and a hat when the sky is clear and it is warm but I just passed it by. We had gotten our groceries for my mom and were heading across the parking lot when I noticed the same man following us, almost ready to sprint towards us, so I whispered to my friends. We need to hurry don't ask just go. I see the man start running towards us and I shriek, run, so me and my friends are bolting to my mom's yellow Volkswagen Beetle, I don't know why I dreamt of that car specifically we don't even have one, we hopped in with the groceries and my mom asked, what's wrong, as I was about to answer. The man jumped on the front of the car and me and my friends all yelled drive, as she turned the corner his trench coat flew open and his hat flew off. I was in pure terror as I saw the butcher knife in an inner pocket of his coat but his face terrorized me the most. His face was pale with a bright red nose his eyes, they had a red streak going down both of his eyes, his eyes also glowed an orange red like a fire from hell in his soul, his teeth were like daggers with his menacing smile I knew who he was it was Pennywise. Then he disappeared without a trace. In my dream me and my friends decide the same day to go Christmas tree shopping, so we head to the Christmas tree lot. As we searched, I found a lovely ten-foot pine tree but as I looked all around it I find a gap in the back and I was disappointed, but I looked inside and two red marks started to glow and a yellow dagger-like smile started to curve I was so much terror that I couldn't move for a minute enough time for a tear to fall down my face. When I could move, I ran towards my friends without telling them what I had witnessed. Fast forward a few hours later, in my dream, we all decide to go to a nice Thai restaurant in town as we were enjoying our meal a women, who looked a little like Carol Baskian, complimented me and my friends on how proper we were and she wanted to meet my parents, my dad wasn't in this so it was just my mom, so I decide to take her to my home to my mom. Now that we were home I was standing by a knife block in a corner the women was near the oven but still in front of me and my sister was behind her. As she was talking to me I noticed a flicker of red-orange in her eyes and I knew exactly who she was. As she was blabbering away about something I looked at my mom, who was leaning against the fridge, for reassurance and my mom slightly nodded to me. I looked at my sister then down at my hand signaling to her that, on three you lift the oven grate it'll do the rest, she nodded then I counted one. Two, I yelled, three. In mere seconds I grab the butcher knife and I turn on the burner with the woman's throat in my hand. All of the sudden a calm voice came from the woman, sister, sister why are you doing this to me? It was my sister's voice, then she turned to ash. I look over at my sister and she opened her eyes they were orange and red and the smile began to curl. I said in shock, oh no. And then I woke up.